Well, Friday was one of those days, right? You know those days when you want a do-over? When you want to be able to back the truck up and make some different decisions than the ones that you already have? You see, we started out late at our house and then managed to take the route that made us even later at arriving at our first destination. Cleaning the house, I used a dirty sponge on a white wall, <laughs> made a nice big mess. Then I mowed the lawn in my flip-flops. Who does that? <laughs> I'm not sure. But I got tangled up in a prickly vine and it cut my foot. <laughs> Went to Home Depot and ended up being one of those people. You know, the kind who just aren't paying quite enough attention and ends up spilling an entire can of polystane in the middle of the aisle. <laughs> Yeah, that was me. <laughs> then headed into Dunkin' Donuts for a cup of tea because my theory is that the world is all right when you have a cup of tea in your hand. <laughs> and promptly burnt my tongue <laughs> as if the warning on the side of the cup that says caution, contents hot, or the fact that it was burning my hand weren't enough to tip me off. Then it was pouring, right, thunder and lightning when I got back in, on the road to pick Brayden up at my aunt's house. It was just kind of one of those days, one thing after another after another. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, now, does she want us to pity her here? <laughs> because there are plenty of people worse off, Jen. I think you know that, right? And I know that's true. And in fact, I wasn't even wallowing in self-pity on Friday. Instead, I was mad at myself, right? Calling myself pretty much every name in the book, including dummy and loser and a whole bunch of other ones that I can't mention in church. And then do you know what happened? Now, I'm guessing you might be wondering what kind of harebrained thing I managed to cook up next. <laughs> but this part wasn't at all my doing. As I was driving to my aunt's house, a beautiful rainbow appeared in the sky in front of me. Now, when people see rainbows, I'm certain that all sorts of responses go through their minds, right? There are as many responses as there are people. Little kids tend to think about the colors, right? Roy, G, Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. They teach you when you're about yay high, <laughs> those things. Some people tend to think about the science behind them, right? Just the right conditions at just the right time makes a rainbow. Some people don't even notice them at all, or if they do, they don't think twice about them. So what? It's a rainbow. You've seen one, you've seen them all, right? Well, as for me, I looked at that rainbow that was in front of me on my way to my aunt's house, and I said, wow, God. <laughs> How did you know that was just what I needed right now? A reminder of your promise to walk with me even when I am clearly not having one of the most intelligent of days. Now, as I thought about that response, especially in the context of today's scripture lessons, I was reminded that although faith is a gift from God, and we read that all throughout the Bible, we who believe make a conscious decision each and every day to accept that gift and to live according to it. And sometimes that means that we're the strange ones in the car who are giving thanks to God for the rainbow instead of admiring the pretty colors or wondering what's coming for dinner at night. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, Joshua said as he gathered people from all different backgrounds. He was going out on a limb there, right, because the custom in those days when entering a new land was to fall in behind the original inhabitants and worship whatever gods they did. And the people Joshua had with him were people who had no other reason to stick together besides their similar belief in God. They weren't family or friends necessarily. They came from different places and different tribes. And yet here he was asking them if they would give up on all normal customs and tr traditions, join together as one family in faith, and follow God. Do you want to join me? Or would you prefer to worship some of the other gods that have been around the way? Do whatever you will, but decide and do it today, Joshua said to them. If you are with me, 
willing to serve God, then let it be so, and with faithfulness. Now, much of the book of Joshua recounts what happened with the Israelites in the time of Abraham and Moses. So the promise of a nation, liberation from slavery, provision in the wilderness, God's nearness to the people, and the covenant promise at Mount Sinai were things that weren't so far off from the experience of the folks who were blessed to enter the promised land. So the people who followed Joshua agreed, right? We will serve the Lord too. How could we not after seeing so many amazing signs? How could we not after seeing the rainbow in the sky on Friday evening? And so the covenant that was made at Mount Sinai with Moses was reaffirmed with a new Israel as they entered their new land of Canaan. They made a conscious decision to follow the Lord against all societal norms. God had fulfilled God's end of the covenant, and now it was their turn. And Joshua challenged them to do so, no matter what it took them. Yes, the folks who entered Canaan behind Joshua were warriors, fighters, survivors. Now, I know absolutely nothing about being a warrior or a soldier. I ascribe to that saying, I'm a lover, not a fighter, right? The closest I've come to being a soldier is being related to them, right? Having two grandpas who fought for our country and a brother who was in the Navy. And I remember watching my brother, John, leave the house on the way to the car that the recruiter had sent the first day as he was leaving for basic training and being so incredibly worried about him. He had enlisted during Desert Storm and I was a freshman in high school watching my brother head off into the unknown. I worried about him like I had never worried about anything in my life before. Would he be safe? Would he make it through okay? Was this the right decision? After all, he had enlisted in the Navy because academics weren't his favorites and he needed an alternative to college. I knew that they had come up with all sorts of new uniform and equipment safety features, right? And, but the question was, did he have everything that he needed? Now that I think back on that very early morning, there was part of me, like I said, I tend to be a little bit on the stranger side who, amidst all of that worrying, was praying that he would know that God was right there beside him, giving him a totally different form of protection. Right? Praying all the things that I had learned during children's sermons and church school and youth group meetings. When my brother entered the Navy, the only thought I had in terms of armor was that which he would wear in battle, should he be called to serve in a foreign land. 